Hi guys, welcome back to Iron Griffin Studio. Okay, this week we've been making some armory stuff. Basically just little uh, mini projects uh, that you can put in a little room and it'll effectively turn it into an armory or an armory type thing. Um, so yeah, we've got a few little projects to go through, so um, let's get started. All right, so the first thing I did was I created some XPS form bases. These, these are just an inch uh, by an inch, and I'm just going to texture them with the aluminium ball. And this is just in case I needed to put any of these pieces on a very small base, uh, just to keep them from falling over and things like that. Okay, so I took a circular 25mm base to act as the main archery target board and just drew around that and cut it out using some pretty heavy duty scissors on some graphics medium weight chipboard. Okay, so I needed a small hole in the middle of this uh, circle of card here. Uh, mostly because I'm going to use string for the actual uh, for the front of the archery target uh, this is going to indicate a nice thick rope that went on very old targets uh, the kind that you might see if you played Skyrim uh, so I had to push some of this string through the middle of the of the circle in order for it to stay put where I wanted it so I used a kind of a, a sculpting tool just to poke it through and then I frayed the back out and I stuck it down using some PVA glue. I kind of frayed it out so that it wouldn't cause such a, a bulky mass on the back of the cardboard there. So I used a bit of PVA glue and just smeared it all around to uh, flatten down those fibers on the string. Now once the back of the board there was dry, I dipped the rest of the string in a solution of PVA glue and water, I think it's a 50-50 mix, I just kind of dipped the whole thing in and got the string nice and wet and then slowly began to spiral it around the middle, twisting the string to keep the braid nice and tight as I went. So I was twisting the string and then rotating the cardboard and eventually you get a nice tight spiral of string. Now I had to give this time to dry whilst not unraveling at the same time so I took a piece of parchment paper and tried to sort of wrap it up, it sort of started to come away a bit there. So I re-tightened it, used the parchment paper, folded it over to keep it nice and flat, and then I placed a cup of water over the top to keep it uh, from uh, unraveling and, and generally making a mess. So once it was dry, I unfolded it and all that string was nice and glued together now and wasn't going to come away. There is of course that little bit that's uh, sticking up there and, and a bit loose so I'm just going to tighten that down with some uh, super glue in stages uh, and just kind of like make sure that it's all pressed to the outside edge. Okay, so next I wanted a backing for this board, so I'm going to use some coffee stirrers and I'm going to glue them all together with a bit of wood glue. Uh, 
and I'm using a few little matchsticks here to strengthen the bond between those planks. Now using the cutting mat as a measuring guide, I cut out some inch long planks from a coffee stirrer as usual. Now these are going to be the base of the target stand and the reason I went with an inch is because I want this thing to only take up a, a one inch uh, grid square uh, so that it's not too cumbersome and doesn't you know get in the way too much. So I'm using a bit of wood glue there and I'm going to put on a few little feet. Technically this thing's upside down at the moment. These little tiny uh, coffee stirrer feet will help keep this thing steady when it's flipped the other way around. Now we need a pretty sturdy stand to go between the base part and the actual archery board target. So I just got this bit of a five millimeter dowel, sawed it to a, a reasonable length. It's maybe like two inches long. And then I drilled a hole using my Dremel uh, up the middle of it, glued a paper clip inside there. This is gonna be a pin that we're gonna to use to stick it into place. You'll see though that I accidentally cracked the dowel, so I need to fix that. For that I'm going to use a bit of string, but I'm only going to use one of the fibres of the string. So I just kind of parted the, uh, the fibres away and, and then wrapped it around the end. And this should help hide the crack and also adds a little bit of uh, a detail to it. And don't worry, we're going to clip off that uh, paper clip before we pin it in place. I'm going to use a bit of No More Nails and glue the archery board to the backing of it, which I made earlier. And that should just ensure that it's definitely, definitely not going to go anywhere. And once that No More Nails glue is dry, I just clipped off the excess with my pliers and then tidied up the extra bits around the side with my Dremel sanding tool. Then drilled a tiny hole in the base and added some wood glue and then pinned the main shaft of the archery stand to the base. So because those two match sticks on the back of the archery board are flat and the stand, the post that holds it all together is kind of rounded like a dowel uh, I thought it would be best to sand a, a small uh, uh, depression in the matchsticks so that the dowel could get a better surface contact. I'm using wood glue there just to glue that in place. Quick paint job later, and there you have it. Okay, this one's a quick one. So I have a lot of ball bearings uh, laying around. These are just six millimeter ball bearings, plastic. And I thought, you know what? These could be pretty good cannonballs. Maybe you can just glue them together and hopefully in some sort of formation that maybe you would stack up cannonballs in. I decided that it'd probably be best to stick them to a, a small piece of paper and then just apply loads of glue over the whole thing. Uh, hopefully that would help them uh, all stick together. Also, th with the paper, you can just kind of peel it away or tear it away afterwards. 
you might get a small amount of paper on the bottom but it's something that can't just be uh, hidden on a base or something. So I added quite a few of these uh, small 6mm ball bearings with lots of glue. Wait for them to dry, quick paint job, added a barrel and then some cannonballs and a powder keg. Easy. Alright now moving on to the grindstone. For this I'm going to use a piece of XPS foam. This is pretty thin, maybe about six, five, six millimeters thick. Got a piece of balsa wood there, a paper clip, and a coffee stirrer. I'm only going to use the bits between the lines there on the coffee stirrer. Don't need to use the, the ends because they're not the right shape. So with the paper clip, bend it into a shape kind of like this using uh, some needle nose pliers pretty simple. Then kind of etch out a circle in the XPS form. I just used an existing um, bit of pipe that I had lying around and just stamp it into the XPS form and then kind of trim it out. You get a very tiny little circle like that. Then really you want to cut this coffee stirrer down its length like this and then cut the ends off as well so that you end up with two pieces like this. Now the, this chunk of balsa wood I sliced a bit off the top across here to create a small seat area for someone to sit while they're grinding a weapon and then this thing gets cut into a few different pieces just these are just uh, tacked as the legs or the stands for the uh, for the grindstone so using a cocktail stick I very carefully added small amounts of wood glue to the balsa wood legs. Arrange them how I thought the grindstone would look. This is upside down at the moment of course. And then just placed the length of coffee stirrer on both of those legs. Then turning it the right way up for the camera, added a bit more glue and added another piece. The extra coffee stirrer there is just for support on the legs. And then once that was dry you've got a piece that's a bit like this. Next I just added the seat using again wood glue and I wasn't really happy with the size of the grindstone so I cut out a new one this one's a little bit bigger and I just kind of lightly sanded the edge to give it a nice smooth texture poked the paper clip through the middle and then this would act as the kind of spindle or axle for the grindstone and there you've got your little handle already shaped into it and here I'm just going to take the Dremel and kind of uh, cut out a small impression in the copy stirrer so that the axle will sit nice and neatly inside it. Now I added a few small styrene bits and pieces you don't have to add these if you don't want to but I thought that this would be a nice embellishment and really help to sell the piece these would be like little metal fixings and brackets I also added a small piece of styrene tube to the center of the grindstone to help it um, secure in place while the uh, the paperclip is through the middle of it. So the paperclip here would slide through those little brackets on the side through the middle of the grindstone and then out the other side of the grindstone and through the next bracket. Of course you can glue these into position if you want. And I then just trimmed off some of these pieces here that looked a little bit too long. And there you go, and then it just needs a bit of a paint job. There you have it, I just used a quick wash to paint most of the wood and some dark browns and dark greys to paint the metal fixings. Okay, now moving on to the weapon rack. So for this we're going to need a base to start with. So I'm using a two lengths of coffee stirrer here and I'm gluing them together along their length with some wood glue. And then using more wood glue and applying it with a cocktail stick to a match stick, I added some more lengths of coffee stirrer 
just to act as the, uh, the basic framework for the weapon rack. Okay, so the base board on the weapon rack needs a small, very shallow lip gluing down. So I took some wood glue, applied it to a very thin piece of coffee stirrer, and stuck that down to the very edge of the base. Then stuck down the main framework on top of that base as well, and added a few beads to the top of the posts. And I then marked up a few places on the main framework where some pegs might go through to hold the weapons in place so I drilled the holes through with a dremel and then I used cocktail sticks with a little bit of wood glue just um, poked them through those little holes and let them dry And then once that was all dry, I took my pliers and I cut off those cocktail sticks, but not all the way down. I wanted to make sure that I left it a little bit protruding out. This would look like a small peg that was placed on purpose to uh, keep the weapons in place. And then for a paint job, I just applied a quick wash to the whole thing and then super glued in a few uh, old bits from my bits box, just a few weapons here and there, there's a halberd there, and a hammer and a spear, and then I did a few more, and there you go, all done. Right now a standing banner. Okay, so for this it's mostly cocktail sticks for the frame. So just a cocktail stick with a hole in it and then another piece to act as a crossbar with a hole in it as well. I used the Dremel for that. And I just tidied up the ends to make it a little bit more rounded. And I super glued in a small piece of paper clip to add as a pin and then trimmed that down and pinned in the crossbar so that you get a nice kind of crucifix shape and then I found this small piece in my bits box it's just a piece of um, kind of like a decorative panther I think it is and uh, just super glued that to the top now this banner won't stand up by itself so we need a piece of styrene tube and then one of those inch square bases that I made earlier I just poked it into the XPS form to make an impression of where it needs to be and applied the cocktail stick inside that tube and super glued it in place. Now for the banner I'm actually going to use genuine cloth. So this is just a piece of old pillowcase. Cut it very carefully into a banner shape. This took a long time and several failed attempts but eventually I, I kind of got it right. I just glued this onto the top uh, crossbar there. Now, for modelling purposes, I would prefer this banner to be a little less, uh, shall we say, flaccid. So I added a little bit of PVA and water to the cloth and hopefully that would stiffen it up a little bit and make it a little bit more durable as well. But unfortunately, it was still a little bit kind of soft and I wanted it to be kind of rock hard really. So. I added some super glue to it. Using the thinnest super glue that you have available would be best for this. Once that glue is cured, you can just give it a quick paint scheme of your choice. And there you have it, one finished standing banner.
there we go guys all finished all done um, it's quite time consuming this project actually it was uh, they are very small pieces but they are quite intricate especially with these things um, so you know it took me a while to get this video out to you unfortunately but I'm really happy with the result and now I've got myself a little makeshift armory that I can just put down anywhere alternatively I could use some of these pieces in other parts of dungeons maybe if it was a, a kind of a blacksmithing area for the grindstone banners can go pretty much everywhere um, weapon racks pretty useful anyway just in, even in a hallway you know but there's a whole bunch of cool things there that I can hopefully use in encounters and players can investigate them and uh, yeah be some hopefully some interesting situations out of it so that's it from this video uh, I'm on Instagram and Facebook if you want to follow me on there if you enjoyed this video please feel free to like comment and subscribe as usual do that little bell thing so you get notified for the next one and uh, hopefully get another video out here really soon but that's all for this one I'll see you again next time thanks for watching and happy crafting oh, also before I forget uh, I painted up this little guy the Lion Griffin uh, he's basically going to be the channel mascot so if you can think of any cool names for him please uh, put them in the description below and you know what I might just select a, a a winning name uh, that I like the sound of um, and he's going to be hopefully in every single shot so yeah there we go all done see you later